Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to explore how to customize your character clothing using the professional outfits pack in this tutorial. Uh, by the end we're going to be getting this a nice looking football club Barcelona outfit right here. I'm going to show you how to reproduce that. But first of all, let's go through a couple of other some more simple examples in Character Creator. Now we have this flight attendant project loaded up here and I'm going to show you how to customize the vest using the embedded substance material settings. So when you want to customize a certain item of clothing, all you need to do is select it and then select Activate the Appearance Editor. And once you've done that, you'll have a number of different options uh, uh, over here, a number of different sections, and we can simplify it by going to this item and twirling it down, and we have Input Maps. I'm going to go to Input Maps first, and I'm going to go into Diagnostic section and enable the Diagnostic mode. Now take a look at the vest. The entire thing is actually black, and that black color corresponds, if we disable Diagnostic mode, corresponds under Fabric with the black color in parentheses here. So if your RGB mask has red, green, blue, cyan, yellow, or magenta, those will be different sections that you can modify separately on your character's clothing, which is really cool. We'll get to more detail on that in a moment. But what I want to do first is open up the base fabric section here. And at the very bottom, what we want to do, what we want to do is add a pattern to this vest. Now you can add your own customized pattern. Uh, you can see pattern one, pattern two, pattern three. If I go to pattern and I go to say, for example, pattern one, and I load in a diffuse map. I'm just going to go to diffuse here and a different uh, map. Let's go down to this uh, material right here, this wild textures material. And when I load that in, we're going to have squares of material. So we need to increase the width and height of the scale uh, of this uh, diffuse map. So let's go ahead and do that. We can take it up to like 1.96. There you go. And we have this uh, nice uh, pattern right there. We can you know rotate it, turn it around. Uh, customize it, uh, do all this, all the stuff that you would normally do with uh, your textures. Uh, but we're not going to worry about that right now. We're going to go back to our black fabric and I'm going to take the pattern opacity all the way down to zero. So we won't have that uh, pattern on our vest anymore. I'm going to use the plaid uh, pattern instead uh, because this one is built in. I'm going to just increase that to maximum value, plaid opacity. And you can see we have this cross hatching uh, pattern that appears. So to modify this, we need to go into uh, Patterns and into Plaid. And you can see the stripe colors that appear right here. So I'm going to disable the opacity on all of these stripes except for the stripe 4. And we're going to keep this one. Uh, we're going to change it from this gaudy color to something a bit more uh, suitable for this uh, outfit, like this nice uh, deep red here. And you can see we get those nice stripes, uh, vertical stripes, along our uh, vest right there. And you can increase the amount of stripes by increasing the iteration value. You can uh, decrease or increase the thickness as well uh, for these stripes. And you can offset and rotate them as well. If I wanted them to be, uh, you know, horizontal instead, I can do so in any uh, variety of ways that I'd like. Uh, 180, uh, negative 180 right here. All right, so that's our first example. That's how you can quickly use, uh, import your own pattern and also use uh, the embedded substance material patterns in uh, Character Creator. So let's move on to our second example here. I'm going to go back to projects and load in this FedEx employee here. Sorry, he's a Medex employee uh, right here, as you can see on his shirt. So what we're going to do is uh, there's many different corporate cases that you can use this outfit for, this project. I'm going to show you one quick example here. What we're going to do is customize this shirt. Now we can customize it in any number of ways by adding custom logos to our shirt to make it a corporate shirt. Uh, you know, lots of uh, employees wear this type of shirt. Uh, so what we're going to do first is select the open collar short sleeve shirt and activate the appearance editor. And once that's done, let's take a look at the input map for this shirt. So we're going to go to diagnostic and enable. And you can see we have a red section right here and the rest of it is all black. So that red again corresponds to the red section under fabric. Let's disable this for now and take a look at the input map. So under input map, you can see we have red and black on our input map right there. Now, if you want to create your own custom RGB mask, you can do so by going to the textures channel right here with your mesh selected. Just launch the UV map. And that's going to load up uh, the UV map in Photoshop. And when it does, you can see we have the uh, chest area right here and we have the sleeve area right here. And I'll show you more about how to customize this in our next example. But for now, let's just go back to Character Creator and take a look at the uh, fabric section. So the black uh, section here is the one that I want to modify first. I'm going to go into base fabric black and I'm going to enter in some values under hue, saturation, lightness. Now I've already pre-calculated uh, these values and you can probably guess uh, as we get to the true color what uh, corporation we're going to be uh, showing in this example here. Let's change our lightness to uh, 0.5 and if you guess McDonald's you are absolutely correct. So we're going to change this to McDonald's shirt. So now we need to change the uh, color of the trim. If we wanted to we can just go to the uh, red section down here 
And we could change that to something like a little bit whiter by increasing the lightness. And you can see that adds a nice white trim, which might be suitable for McDonald's. But if I want to get rid of that trim altogether, what I can do is I can just change the hue, saturation, and lightness values to exactly the same. 0 0.88, 0 0.65, and the last one is 0 0.5. There you go, so exactly the same. However, you can see we still have those seams and the material is slightly different. We can take that off by going down to seams normal and taking seams normal all the way down to zero. There you go. And if we zoom in now, we still have a little bit of a problem here with the materials being a little bit different. And that's because the cotton density is a little bit different as well. If we go to the black section and we take a look at the scale width and height, we have 0 0.6 and 1. However, if we go to the red section, you can see the scale value is 1 and 1. So we need to change this to 0 0.6. And you can see when we do that, it'll blend in nicely. So let's take a look at adding our corporate logo onto our character now. So let's go to uh, decals now. Under decal 1, we have the MedX logo you can see right here. Let's swap that out for a McDonald's logo. So I'm going to double click that. And under uh, logos, I have under my on my desktop somewhere, texture, logos. There we go. I have tons of logos I can use. Let's just use this McDonald's one right now. There you go, so now we have a certified McDonald's employee. And we can go to like Decal 2, for example, and load in another diffuse map. Let's load in the name tag. And we can, uh, you know, move that name tag over a little bit by uh, using our uh, uh, translate over here. And probably change that uh, width and height value a little bit. Get down to that and uh, move the X a little bit over there. Getting the position is kind of tricky sometimes. Over 0 0.32. There we go. All right. So we have this uh, Rachel, this boy named Rachel right now. We can change it to a female if we want by just going to our uh, morphs here, uh, full body morphs. And let's choose the uh, base female. And then we can uh, swap out the hair as well. Choose something like these uh, bangs with short hair. Or I should say uh, short hair with bangs. And there we go. So now we have our manager, Rachel the McDonald's employee. All right. Let's move on to our final example here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to load in a basic character. So I'm going to go back to morphs and we're going to choose a uh, base male. And I'm going to change the hair as well to something a little bit more uh, stylish, like a soccer player. Let's choose this pompadour hairstyle. And then I'm going to change the clothes slightly, actually quite a bit. Uh, we're going to go to pants and under uh, essential clothing, we have shorts. I'm going to just add in this classic shorts A. And for shirt, we're going to replace that shirt under essential clothing with a basic t-shirt. So uh, the t-shirt can be either one. This one works fine. And we'll need to uh, de uh, delete that open collar shirt right there. There you go. So we have our base. And one final touch we're going to do is add the uh, soccer shoes and soccer uh, socks as well. So let's go to professional outfits and soccer shoes. There we go. And other others. Professional outfits. We have these calf socks, which we'll load in as well. There you go. So believe it or not, that's our base. Now let's get about, let's start uh, modifying the shirt. Now the shirt, uh, if I go to uh, materials here and I launch the UV v map for this shirt, oops, we launched the wrong UV map. Let's go back to uh, character creator. We have the sock selected, not the t-shirt. So t-shirt and uh, launch UV map. You can see it's fairly simple. We have the sleeves separate from the body of the shirt. Now if we go to uh, back to iClone here, you can see we need to have uh, a solid blue sleeves. We want stripes on the shirt. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create my own custom UV map really quickly here. So with the black color selected, I'm just going to choose my rectangle and we're just going to go ahead and draw over like that and we're going to start a new layer. And the second triangle I want to, or the second rectangle I want to create is going to be absolutely blue. So make sure we have 255 under blue and I'm just going to go ahead and put a blue square over the entire thing. And there we have it, the world's simplest RGB mask. So I'm going to uh, save this out to my desktop and we'll just call it, uh, desktop, we'll just call it, uh, RGB mask. There we go. Make sure we save it as a JPEG or PNG. JPEG's fine. Go ahead and uh, OK. And we can close down Photoshop now. We don't need to save this. And in Character Creator, what I'm going to do now is load in that custom RGB mask. So with my t-shirt selected, I'm going to activate the appearance editor. And under input maps, I'm going to change my RGB mask that it currently uh, we currently have. I'm going to change that, double click that, go to my desktop and load in my custom RGB mask. And now you can see we have exactly what we want. The sleeves and the torso have different material assignments. So let's go ahead and modify the sleeves first, which I assigned the blue color. So let's go to uh, blue. And I'm going to change this from wool to nylon. There we go. A bit more uh, accurate for a soccer jersey. Let's zoom in a little bit here. 
and I want to increase that density to maximum value. There we go. And I'm going to go to the hue, saturation, lightness down here as well and make sure we have the values that we need for our base. So I'm going to choose a hue value of 1 and saturation, we're going to choose 0 0.65. Again, these are just my best estimates for the official uh, Football Club Barcelona outfit. Uh, they're no, by no means completely accurate. So we'll just go ahead with uh, that val those values right there. And let's do the same thing. Uh, let's go to the uh, black base fabric and enter in those same values here as well. Hue, saturation, lightness. We need uh, 1, 0 0.65, 0 0.65, oops, and 0 0.54, 0 0.54. There we go. All right, so now we have it uh, ideally set up. We need to increase that density as well for the nylon base. There you go. So there's our shirt. Now let's go about adding that three stripe pattern onto our shirt. And we're going to use the exact same technique that we did on our flight attendants. So let's go to the base fabric, which we're already at right now, and let's increase that plaid opacity all the way to maximum. And you can see it only applies to the torso, not the sleeves, which is what we want. And let's go then to our, uh, under t-shirt, we can just go to a uh, pattern and our plaid and let's take off the opacity on all of those stripes. And now we just have simple pink stripes. And let's double click, or let's click this uh, color swatch here, and let's choose a red color. I actually have the values here. We're just going to modify the current one slightly by 221 and uh, the 141 value here. There you go. That's my most accurate uh, estimate. So then what I want to do is modify those other values as well. So uh, iteration, we're going to change that from 4 to 3. So now we have those big three stripes down the middle, and we'll change the stripe thickness. Uh, change it uh, up a little bit. We'll change it to about uh, 0 0.5. There we go. Looking nice. And we don't need to rotate it or tile it. If you wanted to rotate it, you can do so, or you can actually tile it as well. If we, uh, you know, tiled it on the uh, x-axis, you can see we can tile it that way, but I don't think we need to do that. We'll just keep it the way it is. And we've successfully created our base. We can probably conform it a little bit uh, at the bottom there. Let's uh, calculate the collision. There we go. Fix that really quickly. Now the shorts are a little bit different. We need to modify the shorts as well. So let's select the shorts and activate the appearance editor for those. So the shorts need to be a dark red color similar to this one. So what I need to do with the shorts is let's go into the classic shorts input maps. Let's take a look at the uh, input map for this. We have black and then fluorescent green at the bottom there for the trim. So let's go into fabric and let's do the black one first. So under hue, saturation, lightness, again, I have these all pre-calculated out. I'm just going to go 0 0.35 and for saturation, 0 0.75, and lightness at 0 0.5. And you can see when we do this, it turns pink, and that's because we need to change the material from denim again to nylon. And we can take that density all the way up as well. And there we go. So let's do the same thing for the fluorescent green section, just so we don't have that weird trim at the bottom. There we go. Uh, again, so change it from denim to nylon, and density all the way up to 10, and enter in those values really quickly for hue, saturation, and lightness. Uh, 0 0.35 and saturation 0.75 and lightness 0.5 all right so we'll just go ahead with that they may be a little bit too bright red but i'm just going to use a, use that as my estimate okay so our shorts are fine let's go to the work on the socks now the socks could be a different color they're supposed to be blue i believe if i take a look at my reference uh, you can see yep they're supposed to be sort of blue on the bottom there so let's go back into character creator and load in the socks in the appearance editor so let's take a quick look at the input maps for the socks. Uh, diagnostic RGB mask, there we go. So the yellow area is the area we want to modify this time. So let's disable the diagnostic mode. Go back into fabrics, and this time we're going to modify fabric 5, the yellow one. And we're going to leave this uh, at cotton because if we zoom in on the socks, you can see we have those nice vertical uh, texture stripes for the uh, fabric there. And we want to keep that. We don't want to change it to nylon like we have here. So we're just going to keep that. And so I'm going to enter in a different value for the cotton, which I've already calculated out again as well. Uh, 0 0.56, 0 0.65, and 0 0.51, 0 0.51. There we go. All right, looking good. And there is our completed outfit. So all we need to do now is add those decals in like we did with the McDonald's employee. So let's go to uh, Appearance Editor. And we're going to go into the decals. So decal one, we'll go ahead and load in the diffuse channel uh, under my texture that have the logo folder again. And here is my football club Barcelona logo or crest. And you can see it's a little bit off color. So what we need to do is just modify that slightly. 
Uh, we're going to double click the diffuse HSL and that's going to reset the diffuse or the hue saturation lightness values. Now you can see we have the original colors right there and we can you know move that over slightly. Let's try uh, these values here. Oops, negative 0 0.34. There we go. And that'll put it right on his uh, left section of his chest there. And let's load in the Nike symbol as well. So uh, with Decal 2, we'll just go ahead and diffuse channel and load in this Nike swoosh. Now this one's going to load in very large, and that's because the original image is actually a little bit larger than we want. Uh, generally, it's recommended to keep your images at around 500 by 500 pixels uh, for your decals. Now again, I've uh, kept the values for this uh, Nike logo as well. Let's change the uh, width and height. We need to change this to 0 0.1. And the width is going to be 1.5. And then for our translate values, I believe we have negative 0 0.19. And height is going to be 0 0.3. There we go. So now we have that Nike swoosh on his chest right there. And the color is a little bit off, so we need to change that to a nice bright yellow. And it's easy to do that simply by modifying the diffuse. We can, you know, change it to pink or purple or really whatever we want. Let's just change it to a nice bright yellow that we originally wanted right there. All right. So now our outfit is absolutely complete and we have this guy ready for action. So let's export him and import him into iClone. I'm going to go over here to export iAvatar or send a character to iClone. We can also do that. But I'm going to export him as an eye avatar because I want to make sure our skin and body resolutions are at the maximum values, uh, 2048 by 2048. And if we want, we could also maximize the t-shirt value as well, 2048, and the shorts. And let's just go ahead and export it that way. I'm going to export it as a test player. We already have Barco player there, so I'm going to export it as test player avatar. All right, once that's done, let's go to our desktop and find our test player. We can click and drag him into iClone and actually just replace the character that we have there right now. And there we go, and his face looks a little bit different. We can probably, I think he's probably blinking. There we go. And the lighting is a little bit weird on those eyes, so we can actually, like, you know, turn the lighting over this way so you can actually see his face. There we go. So this is what the character creator uh, character will look like. Now I've opened up the Realistic Human 100 pack and you can also replace you know, any of your character creator characters with these heads as well. So there's ultra realistic looking heads in this pack, a whole ton of them. Uh, I can replace, for example, this one if I select my character, replace it with this. Oops, we need to make sure we select the character, not his shirt. There we go. And import in everything. And when we do that, you can see we have this guy's uh, very realistic looking uh, facial texture if we zoom in right there ultra realistic looking texture and as well we have the nice texture on the uh, shirt as well. So everything's uh, re really nice looking. And that's pretty much all there is for this tutorial guys. We'll learn how to uh, render these guys in Indigo in a separate tutorial. And make sure you check out our forums at forum.reillusion.com and I'll see you in the next video.